This is Joseph Mendoz with another video for virtualsheetmusic.com. Uh, today I'd like to just briefly talk about a, a little exercise that maybe I haven't shown all of you yet about uh, uh, that'll help you to sustain a lot better. Uh, so this is a common problem in cello playing where um, uh, we play a note uh, and it kind of dies away uh, unintentionally uh, at the tip as we approach the tip, and uh, and then what we do is, is to, to kind of try to fight this, we end up squeezing and pressing and doing all this stuff that really causes the sound to choke and sound even weaker, um, uh, which uh, turns into kind of a, a, a vicious circle. Uh, so uh, we want to prevent that from happening. And and I've talked about this many times in, in other videos, this, this kind of motion where you lift your hand, your bow hand, as you approach the tip. Uh, and that's what helps to sustain. So to any of you who are familiar with my videos, you're going to know that already. This is maybe this is another trick that I don't think I've shared in any other video uh, to, to, to kind of learn this position. And all you're going to do, it's very simple. Uh, you can play, um, it's, it's easy to do this on, the a, on just an open A string. You're going to divide the bow into four equal parts, and you're going to memorize where those parts are. So it'll be here, 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 and well. That's the tip. So that those are our four parts. So just three spots really on the bow to divide into four parts. Um, we're going to first play a down bow. And we're going to stop at that spot. Now we're going to place our hand at that spot right there. And we're going to play another down bow. Now that down bow now should feel like that you're at the frog, even though you're the frog's all the way back there. So we're going to play another bow. And I, get, I guess I went a little past halfway. A little past where I want, but pretty close. And then we're going to move our hand again. I'm going to play another down bow, and this one should be as equally powerful without you having to really do much. And then the very last one, which is normally the weakest part of the bow, this now should sound pretty full. Now, when you get to the tip, I want you to freeze, and, and you'll see what I do here. Okay, so I've frozen, and now I'm going to take my hand, and I'm going to hold the tip. Now, I'm going to make sure that I maintain the exact angle and the exact everything that I have set up here, exactly where the that that bow is. And now I'm going to put my arm all the way out there. And now that's what's going to teach me how high up off the D string I actually need to be. And how, for example, how much bend in my elbow there should be and all this kind of stuff to get this, this nice amount of power at the A string. It's just a little trick. Um, uh, to, to teach you how high you have to get. And then so the next time when you play a down bow, say at the beginning of the Dvorak cello concerto, and you really want to sustain, then you know and you've memorized that that's exactly the spot that you have to get to. To make sure that you're able to really sustain, right? And, and to get that, that lifting motion. Because really it's just about leverage. Um, I know we hear, uh, you know, uh, as cellists, we hear a lot uh, more said about things like arm weight and things like that. And that, if that's a useful picture for you, then you can use that picture as well. But I've personally I've never found that picture helpful in, in my own playing or in, in my own teaching. Um, that just thinking a little bit more practically about leverage and about, um, you know, how much power are we actually transferring into the string? And then how are we doing it? And this is another thing that sometimes comes up too, not to sound defensive, uh, but this is another thing that uh, that comes up. Sometimes I have students that ask me when I when I first share them, share that with them. They they say, well, how how am I supposed to keep my shoulder down? Because you know we're all told that we have to keep our shoulders down. Well, yeah, I mean, the shoulder down is a good idea. Sometimes the shoulder can look up depending on your 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 bone structure up here. Um, uh, but for most of us, it's not a problem because really uh, this motion. All we're doing really is just kind of this turning motion this way. And you can do this completely isolating the shoulder muscles. It's, it's not even shoulder muscles. It's back muscles that raise the shoulder up like that. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different thing. So you can kind of do this, and you can watch my, my shoulder. My shoulder's not coming up at all. It's just kind of uh, staying pretty even. It might be coming up just slightly, but... Nothing that's really going to cause any sort of tenseness in my shoulder. And of course, if my shoulder did come up when I did that, you'd hear in the sound immediately. The same thing would happen. Is the sound would get choked. So um, I hope that was helpful. And uh, please leave your comments uh, down below, not on YouTube, but on the virtualsheetmusic.com website. Another reminder that I do teach online lessons. Um, uh, and so contact me if you're interested in that. 
And uh, once again, this has been Joseph Mendoz uh, for virtualshoemusic.com. Mm-hmm.